now the Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. And as usual, the best cricketers in the Caribbean will be in Antigua to take part in the region's premier local white ball competition. The action will take place from April 13th to 29th at the Sir Vivian Richards Cricket Stadium. The Jennings Tigers, Bethesda Golden Eagles, Bolands Blasters, Empire Nation, New Winthrop Slides, All Saints Pythons, and Pickett's Crushers will try their best to dethrone the Liberta Blackhawks. The Cool and smooth, T20 is back and it's bigger and better than ever. You can't afford to miss a single ball. Indeed, people, the cool and smooth T20 2023 is back. You can't afford to miss it, it's bigger than ever, and you can't miss a ball. If you watched the most recent video on the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Lots of you looking at this video right now actually going, why has this guy got the sun on one side of his face? And listen, people, you, you just have to work with it. <laughs> so, but if you watched the most recent video, you would have seen um, you would have seen the the at the top of the show, the kind of advert that I played. I just played it then again um, with regards to the cool and smooth T20, which is kicking off this year. And I spoke about it in, in, in the video at length and I said, stay locked in, people. And I'm excited. Because today on the show, we've got uh, Dario Bartley, the, the tournament organiser, is with us on, on today's show, looking at the Cool and Smooth T20, talking about what we can look forward to with regards to 2023, why this tournament, the 10th year of the tournament's edition, why it's likely to be, it's not actually Hyper Bowl, the biggest, the best, and the more the most significant version of Cool and Smooth in relation to... Uh, Caribbean T20 cricket as well. And I think it's quite pertinent that in the last six months to a year, we've heard so many people um, within the Caribbean say, we need a Caribbean T20. We need a Caribbean T20 where the focus is primarily on uh, the best West Indian talent um, who aren't necessarily getting the big, big deals everywhere. And every time I heard people say that, I kept thinking, but... We've already got one. We've already got cool and smooth. Um, but I think sometimes people aren't paying attention with the best of what we've got. And I think this year is the year, certainly, where it's time where pe if people are adamant that we need to have a, a, a Caribbean T20, then this is the year for me where we pay attention to a tournament like Cool and Smooth and realize that we've already got something in our hands which can effectively um, play the role of what we want in the region. So excited to get Dario Bartley on the show today to talk about this year's edition, talk about, I don't want to give too much away, but talk about what we can expect this year. Uh, whether teams, whether players, and so on and so forth, and why Cool and Smooth, like I say, is probably is not even probably is the premier Caribbean T20 competition. So, without any further ado, I can't give him a better intro than that. <laughs> let, me, let me get Dario on the show and see what he's saying. Yes, Dario, how you doing? Oh, good man, Marshall. Firstly, thank you for having me, and good day to your listeners as well. Well, your viewers, sorry, <laughs> listeners and viewers, you know. Um, but Dario, first things first, just how are you doing in general before we even before we even chop up cool and smooth, etc. Uh not bad, man. I'm just getting to a bit of work. You know that I have um primary duties that I have to handle. Um obviously with a very exciting T20 series happening right now between West Indies and South Africa in South Africa. I am in South Africa and I'm enjoying it just like all the fans, hoping for a big West Indies win tomorrow to clinch the series. Most definitely. I mean, you're certainly getting everyone. You, I was about to say you're getting your money's worth, but you know what I mean? Like what two <laughs> thrilling games, uh, two thrilling games already. Um, even though 
we're not here to, to talk about the West Indies. I do want to ask you about that. What was it? What was it like for the second T20? Just what, what's it like when you're watching from the kind of dugout and you're just seeing six after six after six after six just raining down in the in the stands? I've always wondered what that kind of experience is like. It was a miraculous experience, man, especially with the crowds that we've been able to see um, here in South Africa. Um, with it being a Sunday, they definitely came out. They definitely enjoyed themselves. Um, Johnson Charles, just a remarkable innings. Um, quickest T20 century by a West Indian. Um, smashed the ball all over the park. I think that everyone thoroughly enjoyed that. And then to see South Africa, and he actually said in his interview, at the halfway point, that if we got there, then we know it's possible for South Africa to get there, especially mm -hmm. with them being at home and knowing the conditions a little better. And then obviously you saw what Quinton de Kock did and then they did get there. So pretty exciting to watch, man. Um, different venue tomorrow, but we're hoping for a similar West Indies performance and a not so similar South Africa performance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all, all eyes will certainly be glued um, on the match tomorrow. Like I say, I think... No, no matter people's individual views are across the two games, we've certainly had two thrilling games. And that's all you can ask for as a sports fan. You can only ask for two really competitive and thrilling games, particularly in that, in that version of cricket. And, and that probably works as a really great segue, Dario, because um, as I said at the top of the show, you're, you're tournament coordinator uh, for the Cool and Smooth T20. And I'm, I'm wary, Dario, because last year we had you on the show prior to the 20 prior to the 2022 edition. And um, that got quite a lot of engagement from our end. Obviously, our, our show is based in London, although we speak to the diaspora and beyond. And um, I feel like this year you're taking it up a notch, just based already on some of the press releases that, 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 that the tournament has, has released. Uh, we, we've had reference to Scotland coming along to get involved. A lot of the Scottish players will be getting involved. And that's just some of the press releases. We, you, have, you haven't even released some of the further news that's, that's yet to come <laughs> with, regard, with regards to um, the tournament. But first things first, for those who don't know, how would you describe what the Cool and Smooth T20 is? Because I'm mindful, you may have some new fans this year and they're looking for an introduction to, to what Cool and Smooth T20 is all about. Um, Marshall, Cool and Smooth T20 is really is a really important tournament to me, um, certainly. And I think a really important tournament, definitely a really important tournament to Antigua cricket. And I think a very special tournament um, regionally. Um, considering um, what the CPL has done over the years and the, the, the way that the CPL is set up, obviously a lot of people, you know, have been calling for that kind of Caribbean T20 feel. And I think that with the inclusion of um, some of the professional players that we have had over the years, um, names like Sheldon Cottrell, for instance, um, Krishma Santoki, who has played T20 cricket all over the world, Kenna Lewis, who has played T20, now T10 um, cricket all over the world, Kyle Mayers has played, um, who is now showing exactly what he can do, not only on the world stage, but within um, some of those more prominent T20 leagues. I think that we've been able to create a tournament that is of the standard um, to, be, to be compared, uh, not, not to be compared, but maybe to be considered a hunting ground for CPL teams, a place mm. that CPL teams can look and say, okay, these are people that are getting experience in Caribbean conditions and doing well. Possibly they could do well in a CPL. And I think that... Um, that's a perfect segue to talk about the involvement of Scotland, for instance. We had George Munsey um, in last mm -hmm. year. I must give credit to, to Will Quinn for sorting that out. Um, Will Quinn's his agent, by the way. Um, George Munsey played in the tournament last year, and he just enjoyed himself so much. Me and him had breakfast and on quite a few mornings, and he just kept saying to me, Dario, we need a way to get this out to the world. You know, We need a way for more people to be watching the cool and smooth t20 for more players to be playing in the cool and smooth t20 and another thing that he was quite adamant on was that he wasn't pleased um coming to the caribbean for two weeks and only playing five games which it worked mm -hmm. out the five games because there's a possibility well last year there was a possibility that you could only play three if you were knocked out in the group stages um so i listened to him and we kept in contact obviously thereafter um he thought that the 
experience was invaluable in terms of learning Caribbean conditions, learning how Caribbean bowlers go about their game and learning to counterattack that. Um, so shameless plug for Muncie. He's trying to get into the CPL um, this year and for years to come. But um, he just thought that it's something that he had to extend to, to his team. And mm. through, through George Muncie and through um, some of the that new leadership group within Scotland cricket, um, actually, in a conversation that was started by my father, um, Zoral Bartley, and uh, Cricket West Indies director, Jason King, when they went to the India versus Pakistan match at the World Cup, um, they, met, they met the CEO of Scotland Cricket, and, you know, they started talking about the possibility of bringing the entire team down. Um, once I got wind of that and I spoke to, to George Muncy, he was really the driving force behind connecting all the dots in terms of the right people in, in Scotland Cricket to encourage them to now send their team to camp in Antigua, um, considering they have a, the World Cup qualifiers coming up in Zimbabwe in June, and they mm. want to get some of that that type of condition and they're hoping we could recreate some of that for them in Antigua. And, um, and then afterwards they will, eight of the players will be staying to participate in the cool and smooth T20. So they'll come from the 1st to the 12th of April. And then the 13th to the 29th is the tournament where eight of their players will be drafted into the eight local clubs to, to participate as overseas players. And you know what? What's what's quite interesting to me, if we just, I guess, if we go further on that kind of Scottish link, is that you'll have some people who will listen to this and almost, almost kind of like naysay and be like, "Yeah, but it it's only Scotland, right?" But <laughs> this is the same Scotland that beat West Indies in the in the in the recently concluded 2022 T20 World Cup. And I say that not to denigrate West Indies, but more to remind people that these are players of, of serious repute, repute, I should say, with serious ability coming to play the tournament. So I, I don't want people to kind of just look at this and be like, OK, well, it's it's not one of the established full member nation size this is a very good squad and a very good set of players and in fact it's worth pointing out i believe muncie was the top run scorer um last year uh I, I, you're about to say i got it wrong but i saw he was, <laughs> no 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 muncie muncie was the top run scorer um in the last, yeah, so, in the last edition of the of the cool and smooth t20 i'm pretty sure he scored at least three half centuries um mm. within that run and um, I'm sure that the Jennings Tigers wouldn't mind me saying that they were they were considered one of the weaker teams um, in the competition. So you kind of see the the quality that he added. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Monty himself played recently in the international um, international league T20 yeah. in the Dubai Capitals team, captain by Ravman Powell. And Ravman Powell um, only has great things to to say about Monty. Um, that team was also coached by West Indian coach Phil Simmons and, and Samuel mm -hmm. Badju was a part of that coaching staff as well, who is here in South Africa. Um, so these are quality T20 players um, who, who have, you know, some somewhat notoriety and they will be a part of our tournament. And we think that it'll not only be a benefit to them, but we'll also have eyes from um, European cricket now looking at the tournament a little bit more eagerly. Um, to see maybe how some more of their quality players can get into this setup. Most definitely. In terms of, and again, I'm, I'm mindful because you can't say everything yet. The tournament is, is still roughly about three weeks away, two and a half, yeah, three weeks away from starting. But in terms of the difference from last year to this year, like I, I guess, like I said at the top of the show, this is an expanded competition the, the the teams are the, the, the same volume of teams are there but certainly based on what you and i have already been talking about there's very much a sense of a growth uh for this year's competition just talk to me a bit uh, not just and this is beyond scotland just talk to me a bit behind the scenes about how do you grow a competition like this because <laughs> it's one thing to say, okay, tournament coordinator and cool and smooth T20, but a lot of work goes on behind the scenes. So what was, how early was the planning stages behind, you know what, this is 2023 cool and smooth. We're really going to go for it this year. We're going to try and really um, expand the tournament into the, into the wider consciousness of the Caribbean and the world. 
Um, well, last year, I would consider, uh, well, last year was a comeback year um, mm -hmm. after COVID. Um, so while this is the 10th year of the tournament, it's not actually the 10th edition because True. we did miss one year early up and then um, two years through, through COVID. Um, but I think immediately after that tournament, and, and it happens at the finals all the time, that there's just this feeling that what just happened was so important to all the people involved. And you mm. know the type of people that are involved. I mean, inclusive of the four legends who have been supporting us throughout um, the throughout all 10 years, really. Sir Vivian Richards, Sir Andy Roberts, Sir Kurtley Ambrose, and Sir Richie Richardson. Seeing them at the finals, um, hearing things that they had to say in interviews that they did about the Cool and Smooth T20. Those are the things that have really motivated us. Um, so we started planning really immediately after that. We reached out to all of our sponsors early to let them know, thank you for sticking by us. Next year, we're giving you something huge to be a part of. Um, loyalty mm. is a big part of the, the Cool and Smooth T20. And I think that, that has really, that's really what kept us alive, um, even during COVID. Um, and to be honest with you, <laughs> some of how it has grown to the magnitude that it has, not even I really understand. Um, mm. I don't want to call many names, but if I tell you about some of the players that have messaged about the Cool and Smooth T20, um, it, it, it's really mind-blowing to me that these guys even know what the Cool and Smooth T20 are, and um, they're, e they're even willing to consider coming and playing in the Cool and Smooth T20. But I would say that even that is slightly by design. I think the time of the year that the tournament is played is very important. Um, Alzari Joseph curses me all the time and says that I'm never, I don't want to play cool and smooth T20 when he is at home. Um, but that's because he's a, he's a world beater in T20 cricket, right? So it's played during the IPL. And the idea is that if you're playing in the IPL, you don't need to play in the cool and smooth T20, right? We want the opportunity to expose the players that are not playing in the IPL. And um, even more so, you know, some of the local players, there's obviously rules that, um, suggest that you have to have a certain amount of local players in your lineup so while we do include the overseas players it's only to add quality to add experience and so that the local players can kind of rub shoulders with these guys but we reckon that we have a good base of local antiguan leeward islands and caribbean players so mm. the addition of, of scotland um and anybody else that you see it's really you know to boost that and um, I would, I'll give a little hint by saying that Scotland won't be the only team that camps in um, that camps in Antigua prior to the start. And um, obviously, there will be players involved in that camp that will make themselves available for the Cool and Smooth T20 as well. That news should drop um, pretty quickly. But um, <laughs> just to, to go back to kind of answering your question and how how it is managing the tournament. Yes, there's a lot going on in the background. But there's also a very good team um, around myself and around the owners um, that have really taken the tournament as their own and are willing to put in um, a lot of that work, obviously, while, while we're busy at times. Yeah, and um, when we talk about the teams themselves, um, again, some of you listen to this. Undoubtedly, there'll be a, a, a huge Antiguan contingent listening to this. But beyond, the, beyond Antigua and those around the Caribbean and the rest of the world, um, we have the Liberta Blackhawks, who are probably the most winningest, to steal an American phrase, the most winningest franchise uh, within the tournament itself. But as we said in the advert played at the top as well, the Jenin Tigers, the All St. Pythons, uh, the New Winthorpe Lions, Empire Nation, Bowling Blasters, Piggott Crushers. Uh, I always say their name wrong. So, Dario, get ready to, to, to correct me. But the <laughs> Bethesda Golden Eagles, is that right or wrong? Bethesda Golden Eagles. That was as, as, as close of you, as you've got. Is what I was saying. <laughs> so the Golden Eagles as well. So though those those are the eight teams involved. Um, I'm more, most familiar with uh, the Black Horse, not just because they're the winningest franchise, but they have Jimbo on their side. Uh, Hayden Walsh, I believe, plays them. Jamal Hamilton. I think Karima Gore plays for the Black Horse. No, Kofi yeah, Jane. Cool. And Kofi James, Kofi James, James, Kofi James, Kofi James yeah. and the reason why I say all these players is because a keen student of West Indies cricket will immediately be like, oh, they all play for Leeward Island Hurricanes. Yes, exactly. So we're talking about some of the best players for the Leeward Island Hurricanes um, 
obviously play for the Blackhawks as well. But there's a fair sprinkling of Antiguan talent around and around and across all teams. And just 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 speaking about not just the Antiguan talent, but the Caribbean talent as well, uh, Dariel, because last year you had the very talented Naeem Young in, in, in the tournament. And Naeem Young, for me, is somebody who has... <sighs> Again, if you if you know your West Indies cricket, he's somebody who's got the world at his feet. I feel like he's on the cusp of something, right? He's he's known obviously within the academy level of West Indies cricket, um, very blossoming um, all rounders. Played for the Pride as well in Super Fifty. Um, he's had CPL deals as well, um, and I, I think I once read an interview with Naeem Young where he again he was another player who spoke about how. He enjoys going across to play uh, cool and smooth T20. So I know whilst it's based in Antigua, um, Dario, it's very much an opportunity for talented youngsters who might not get, you know, because it's hard, Dario, with, with respect, it's hard for a talented youngster to get a CPL deal out the bag straight away. So, yes, I know Matthew Ford, for example, played for the... Um, St. Lucia Kings last year, but he's not been con he's not been a consistent pick on the CPL um franchise circuit. So it's an important tournament for talented youngsters to essentially showcase their ability. Yeah, and I'm happy, I'm happy you mentioned uh, Matthew Ford. Um, anyone that knows anything about me and my involvement in cricket um knows that the the youths giving the youths opportunities is really um what I am about what I care about most. Um, so not only Naeem Young, who is the, the captain of the West Indies Academy, but um, we had Leonardo Julian as mm. well last year. Matthew Ford as well did play last year. And um, I want to go back a few years. I don't remember the exact year, but if I knew half of what I knew about um, content now, I remember <laughs> Kyle, um, Kyle Mears. I, I had to leave the stadium for some reason. And um, I think it was the last over of the game. It was Bethesda playing against... Kyle was playing for New Winthrops, I want to say. And they needed something like 26 runs in the last over. And um, I won't say who was bowling it because I don't want to embarrass anyone who was bowling the last over. But um, I'm pretty sure that Kyle Mears won that match with a, with a uh, ball to spare. Mm -hmm. um, and I had actually, I had, I had to leave the stadium, as I said, and I came back at the end of the game and I was saying to myself, oh, you know, you know, Kyle, Kyle leaving tomorrow or whatever the case is that that team is knocked out. And everyone was saying to me, what are you talking about? Weren't you, weren't you there? Didn't you see it? Um, so to see some of the things that Kyle Mears does know, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have that on stream. So I never even saw it for myself, but I heard about it. And um, to see some of the things that Kyle Mayers does now, even in that past match, um, it's not surprising to a lot of people that have been following a tournament like the Cool and Smooth T20. And um, I, the next week, apparently, he went to Trinidad and did something similar. I'm not sure the name of their T20 competition, but it just shows the importance of these T20 competitions and giving opportunities to young West Indian players um, who, who need that that chance because otherwise there's just really not that much T20 cricket being played in the region. Would it be fair to say that in an ideal world, and I don't know how much you can answer this, Dario, so you're going to have to give me the politician's answer after this, but would it be fair to say that in an ideal world, let's, let's look ahead. Let's, let's go five years from now. You might say, you may say quicker, but let's say five years from now, five to, let's say five to 10 year plan. Would it be fair to say that with the kind of call from all quarters of the Caribbean for a Caribbean T20, from the insider's perspective of cool and smooth, do you think you have a setup there that in five to ten years' time or less, whatever you might think, could be expanded? I don't want to say beyond Antigua, because that's almost like denigrating Antigua, but be, be expanded to be a wider Caribbean competition? Um, I think that we could definitely come up with creative ways and creative structures that allow us to see more talent during the Cool and Smooth um, T20 period or during this April-May period where the mm. IPL is being played and the premier 
prim well, the premier T20 talent from the region is usually um, at the IPL. I think that there are multiple ways that that can work. Um, but what I what I would say is that you know obviously persons from the CPL will watch this, persons from CWI will watch this, and I don't want to get in trouble with anyone. And I'm not sure exactly of the legal framework in terms of what can happen and what can't happen. But what I will say is that this is just a genuine, and both from Amir, the owner, and and myself, who has basically um, ran it for him for the for the longest time. Um, it's really just a genuine attempt to give opportunities. Um, so if anyone is watching that they can think of a way that we can give more opportunities to more players through this structure, I think that um, something that's very important with the Cool and Smooth T20s, the support that we've had from the Antigua government, um, mm. the support that we've had from even Cricket West Indies, allowing us to play at the Coolidge Cricket Ground last year. Um, and making some certain players available and making certain things easier for us to operate the tournament, I think that um, it's obvious that people believe in the product, at least to a certain extent. Um, so the more people that we can get involved during this period, the further we can get it out in terms of whatever broadcasting, whatever streaming, um, and the better quality that we can make the tournament, it will only be better, not only for the region, but even for Antigua and for the Antigua players that stand out within the tournament. So just uh, check this out for an idea. Obviously not this year, but in forthcoming years. How, <laughs> again, you, can't, you probably can't answer it. <laughs> but how open would you be to an all-star Say I'm just calling it All Star, an All Star Caribbean select side, being an extra team in the tournament. So you have your eight, you have your eight established Antiguan sides. It doesn't work with a nine-team tournament, by the way. But you have a ninth side, which is effectively anybody outside of Antigua. Some some players may well already be sprinkled within the Antiguan sides, anyways. But anybody mm -hmm. outside of Antigua, and I don't know what you'd call them. I don't know, West Indian select or something. I, I, I don't know. But um, um, if you do that, remember, I gave you the idea first. <laughs> um, what I will say is that in that particular form, it's your idea, but it's not <laughs> the most unique idea. <laughs> um, because it's it's we, we've discussed things like this, Marshall, and um, I just mm. want to be real, real genuine with you and with your viewers. Um, we're open. We're open to all of that. We we, but at the same time, we have to serve Antigua cricket. I think that every mm -hmm. country, um, firstly, should have a T Twenty tournament. Every single country um, within the leewards, um, within the windwards, should have a T Twenty tournament. I know we're playing a lot of T Ten currently because it's um, easier to package, and um, there's some funding available for that. But I think that with T20 still being the shortest international format, um, we want to ensure that we're, we're breeding T20 cricketers um, at the same time. And um, we used to have Monstrat that played as a, as a country in the tournament. Okay. So they used to be one of the eight teams. We used, to have, we used to have 10 teams, actually. So it used to be the nine local teams, and then Monstrat would, would be added. Um, we have played a cool and smooth T20 and I must give um, credit to the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. They have played um, against the Cool and Smooth T20 All-Star team on multiple occasions. And they have tried to on multiple other occasions when logistics allow. Um, and that, that has seen players like Chris Gale, um, Fabian Allen, Brandon King, um, Devon Thomas. I'm sure Alzari Joseph was there at the time. Um, John, John, Jonathan Carter. I, I'm just picturing that team picture in my head because mm -hmm. we didn't take a few pictures of the occasion, which I'll share with you as well. Um, so they have taken that step in saying that they want to play against a cool and smooth T20 All-Star team, which is really a, a huge recognition in my eyes that the cool and smooth T20 is a formidable tournament with, um, with good quality. Um, and we would like to do things like that against all of the CPL franchises. So as I said, CPL is probably listening if they want to put Antigua in the calendar in terms of a pre-season <laughs> tour. <laughs> that is something that, that we're open to. Um, and also, if anyone that's watching the, the podcast or listening to the podcast knows anything about cool and smooth in general, 
Cool and Smooth is just the sponsor for all sports in Antigua and for anyone else that acts. Um, so we sponsored the, the T10 over in Dominica. And um, we've actually been in discussions with them. I hope they don't kill me for revealing this. We've been in discussions with them about having an all-star team from that tournament possibly mm. participate some t20 cricket um in antigua and whether that's against our all-star team or against some of the clubs or you know whatever whatever allows for the most competitive atmosphere where we can also get some eyes on it and get some guys some experience that's what um we're working with so it's something that we're constantly looking at in terms of how we can integrate more players integrate more teams um, maybe do some traveling there are a lot of tournaments in the u.s that have approached us to send our all-star team um, it's just that our all-star team makeup um, doesn't allow everybody to necessarily be in the same place at the same time but there's different yeah, ways yeah. To integrate, and we're open to to all of those things so this year's tournament just just logistics wise um is it primarily at saint viv uh ground or are you going to use coolidge again or what, what's logistics wise how how are you planning I'm, I'm i'm privy now to the fixture list which we will post on our on, on our handles following this being released but um how how are you planning to work it this year uh, it seems to be a bit of a extent uh it feels like it's a longer tournament this year uh for sure yeah so um, one thing that i did mention logistics on. And, and this is why you're such a good podcast host, Michelle, because one thing that I did mention up front that I forgot to expound upon was that George Muncy was complaining that it was too little games um, for mm. the time period. So it was two groups of four where you mm. played three matches against the three other teams and then, um, and then there's a semifinal and a final. So this year it's a full round robin competition. So you mm. will play seven games initially against all of the teams. So everyone is guaranteed seven games. And then mm. one and four will play in a semi, two and three will play in a semi, and the winners of that will clash in the final. And there'll obviously be a third place match as well. Um, so nine games maximum, um, seven games minimum. So it is a longer tournament. And um, that's something that, I mean, George wasn't the only player to complain about that. The local players complain about it, have been complaining about it for 10 years. So I don't mean to <laughs> leave them out. Um, but everyone wants to play more T20 cricket because, as we say, it's basically the only opportunity to play T20 cricket. And after the tournament, when an All-Star team is named, those 14 players constantly message me and say, who are we playing against this year? Where can we go and play some cricket? You know, what's <laughs> going on with the All-Star team? Um, so I would say that the extension of the season, it's something that has been welcomed by everyone. Um, but again, we, we try to support... Um, just T20 cricket being played and players getting opportunities in general. So one thing that I want to mention is I've been in contact with um, Magish from the Houston Open as well. And mm. we ensured that our dates um, wouldn't clash because we have quite a few players um, from Antigua, from the region, and even a few Scotland players that have been invited to the Houston Open. Um, so I think that the more that these leagues can connect and once everyone um, maintains their standard and looks to up their standards each year um there's so many opportunities for a cool and smooth t20 for a cool and smooth all-star tournament and for a cool and smooth all-star team to even travel listen this is about cool and smooth t20 and so, so my, my next thing is is almost like a clash of interest in saying it but i'm saying it all the same and don't answer it Dario, unless you want to it's not even a question <laughs> all of this makes me wonder dario and i've said it before um Antigua cricket, you could. Antigua used to have a CPL franchise. <laughs> it used to have the Antigua Hawks Bills. Um, and based on just everything that you're saying uh, in this particular episode, th th there is scope, surely, um, Dario, for Antigua to to have its own. Uh, you talk about you basically have your Antigua franchise already. Is that not what your All-Stars team <laughs> effectively, <laughs> effectively is? So um, we may we may one day, Dario, return to Antigua also, also actually having the CPL side of its own. Well, that would be nice. I'm sure that the CPL um, knows the value of cricket in Antigua. Obviously, with the rich cricket in history that Antigua has, um, the facilities that we have available to us and the potential to to develop so much more. I mean, it's no secret that in West Indies cricket that um, we, 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 
in, 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 in Antigua, in West Indies cricket in general, there's a resource issue. We do have that, that rich history that we stand up on very proudly. Um, but at the same time, people are trying. You know, the people mm -hmm. in, in particular positions are trying their best to ensure that things happen, both um, regionally and locally. And um, I think that with the amount of talent that we have coming through, as I said, um, youth cricket is, is one of my passions. I still try to stay in touch with youth cricket as much as I can. And with some of the, the 14 to 22-year-olds that we have in the region, I think that the region is just ripe for, for someone to, you know, not someone, but multiple people to make proper investments. And not only in T20 cricket. Um, we've seen around the world that the players that play good cricket play good cricket throughout formats um mm -hmm. so for instance something like the the headley weeks um series that that cw has coming up is is very important um to get that added opportunity for the best red ball players to play red ball cricket and also for the youth the um the academy team to play to play some red ball cricket um and that that kind of brings me into answering um one of your other questions that you asked in terms of where we're playing, we're playing um, exclusively at the Sevivia Ridges Cricket Stadium this year. Um, but that's just because there's so much cricket going on in Antigua. Um, mm, yeah. So the, the CCG will be will be busy. Um, but, you know, the, the relationship with Cricket West Indies remains very good, I think, from a tournament standpoint. And um, it's something that we hopefully plan to expand on um, in years to come. Just as we bring this one to an end, and we, we've spoken about talent, uh, Dario, but I just want to kind of, and it's not fair to only focus on, I could pick many players, but what's, what's quite interesting um, for me, I'm going to use this one player, and it's your chance to wax lyrical about this player, right? If you are, uh, let's, let's just say an Antiguan, but even if you're a wider West Indian fan, the player I'm going to talk about is Kofi James, Dario. Now, Kofi James really and truly, Kofi may, dif may disagree with me, but really and truly, he's only properly broken into the Leeward Island Hurricanes in the last year, properly, where he's now become an established member, both in White Ball um, and Red Ball. But if you've been watching Kofi James in Cool and Smooth, this talent was already on show a while back. Like what Kofi is currently doing even now in the Red Bull Championship, and I've talked with bat and at, with bat and ball. I've seen Kofi hit blistering fifties at the top of the order in, in, in cool and smooth. So I use Kofi to just say, if anybody's like, why should I watch this tournament? It's players like Kofi James who actually his talent was already on show a couple years back, showing what is potentially. Would that be a good player to use as an Antiguan example of? the talent that is probably on the international level that people aren't fully aware of at this state, at this point in time. Yeah. And um, definitely Kofi James would be the perfect player um, to use to, to, to push that narrative. But um, a lot of people in Antigua will tell you that you can't mention Kofi James without mentioning Kareem Ogoa. And then uh, I think personally that you can't mention Kareem Ogoa and Kofi James without mentioning um, the Liberator Blackhawks and the success that they have had in local cricket. Um, mm. So obviously, Karima might be a little bit more familiar to the world and definitely to your listeners, to his exploits with the USA. But he is also, um, you know, just properly breaking into that Leeward Islands Hurricanes franchise. He scored, uh, him and Kofi had a very good partnership in the last match, actually. He's, mm. He got out on 90, 90 yard, and um, Kofi obviously went on to score, to score his maiden century. Um, but I think that a tournament like, and, and probably the Liberator people will have a word with me about this after, Kenny Benjamin <laughs> is here as well in South Africa, um, but I think that a tournament like the Cool and Smooth T20 would have helped them to develop their club. And obviously, it, there had to be a significant level of development and a plan in place um, prior to you know winning all those years, because it's no... It's no secret that the Cool and Smooth T20 is the most lucrative local tournament, probably in the entire region. Um, so that the 20,000 EC dollars that they have won on multiple occasions, I think that they have really reinvested it into their club and into mm. their players and making sure that they um, secure a structure that allows them to continuously produce players like Kofi James, like um, 
Kareem Magua, like Rakim Cornwall, and um, obviously coupled, coupled that with being able to bring in some of the top level regional talent so that mm. these guys are learning professionalism from them um, and learning just how to go about playing cricket in that type of professional manner and that type of professional setup. Um, so credit must be given to the Liberator Blackhawks. And that's the aim for Cool and Smooth T20, really, that the clubs that win can really reinvest that money in putting their club at the top of the local chain, which you can see has an obvious triple trickle-down effect on the, onto the players. And then those players can represent the country well make mm. it to the Leeward Island stage, hopefully make it to the West Indies stage. And I think that that's how we're really going to be able to build cricket um, locally and then obviously regionally, subsequently. Um, listen, Daryl, you've been absolutely... Well, it goes without saying. There's, 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 there's few guests that we can get on this podcast where I'm like, boy, I don't need to worry. <laughs> they're gonna be able, they're gonna be able to just talk and it's all good and I don't have to struggle to say anything. But um, but before before the uh, the listeners of the uh, Caribbean Cricket Podcast crucify me out of interest because I actually don't know what's Alzari Joseph's club, the All Saints Pythons. And okay, um, so. I want to say I mentioned that Alzari crosses me every year, and uh, <laughs> I definitely don't want to close the podcast. Um, without saying that this year we're actually sponsored by um, quite a few players because mm. they have seen the tournament grow and they want um, players that they're aware of to get opportunities to play T20 cricket as well. Um, so current West Indies T20 captain Ravman Powell is sponsoring a, a few players coming over. Um, okay. Former West Indies T20 captain Kyron Pollard is sponsoring a few players coming over. Um Dwayne Bravo has also um, shown some interest in sponsoring a few players coming over. And um, I just want to really say thanks to those guys for noticing um, what's happening with the Cool and Smooth T20. In a lot of instances, they had no idea that it had anything to do with me when they heard mm -hmm. about it. But they just look at the structure that's available um, and they just realize that it would be a good idea to get some players that they think have the potential to make it big time playing in a tournament like this. Um, so, so that, you know, kudos to them um, for doing something like that, because it would be really easy for them to say, well, I'm already here and I don't need to do anything um, here. But that mm. shows that these guys actually want to give back to cricket in the region and want to create a proper structure so that there's more thems, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Listen, you should, you should never... First things first, I just want everyone listening to hear what Dariel just said because some of those players that he's mentioned often get lambasted. What did they ever do with a West Indies cricket? Like, they never did anything, right? But that's one way to give back. They don't have to do that. And and what's, what's interesting, Dariel, is you didn't even have to mention that. And if you hadn't mentioned it, we'd never probably know. So, and it's just interesting to me that they... They haven't made a big song and dance about doing it. They've just done it. Do you, do, you, do you see what I mean? And that's all part of putting back into the system and, and so on and so forth. Um, I hope one of those players they've sponsored, I'm going to just assume that maybe one of the players that um, Dwayne and Kyron might have sponsored is a Trinidadian player, right? Now, if, if one of them is a Trinidadian player, I hope that one of them is a is Joshua James. That's all I'm going. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. It may be. It may not be. But if I was going to sponsor a Trinidadian player and send him over to Cool and Smooth, it would be Joshua James. That's all I'm saying. But, um, but... Marshall, you, you just have to wait and see, Marshall. <laughs> but, but that but that does lead me um, into the. Sorry, I did say it was the end. But one more question, Derek, because I just realised on my notes I didn't mention it. The draft. So. In terms of, is it already done or just in terms of how, how for those, because there'll be some statos listening to this who want to know about the allocation of players and this, that and the other? Um, no, for the, for, the, for the statisticians and for the analysts, um, the information on squads will be released pretty soon. Um, mm. We try to give the, the teams themselves a big stake in the tournament and a big say in how the tournament is run. So we're still kind of working through the draft process. As you know, it's never really been a traditional draft. Mm. Um, but one thing that I can say, for instance, if a player that's come in has played for a team before, 
um, we'll be allowing them to rejoin that team. So Muncie is already um, with, with the Jennings Tigers. Um, mm. So the other seven Scotland players are up for grabs. And then um, when we reveal some of this big news that we um <laughs> that we alluded to <laughs> at the beginning of the podcast um persons will see you know just some of the other players that may be returning and um rejoining their squads possibly and some of the big players who will be coming for the first time and be going into that that draft process um but obviously caribbean cricket um through technology and through travel has become quite small so you know mm. some guys have teams for some guys are coming in on their own accord and they already have teams that they want to join up with players that they want to play with. And, mm. um, we, we don't think that that's a bad thing. Um, the more, the more, the more the merrier from our perspective. Listen, people, I, I, I said I was ending it five minutes ago. This time I actually am, but just in terms of where to find all of the news, um, as we head into the tournament, people, firstly, you can find it on the Caribbean cricket podcast. So this is, this is our way of essentially introducing this year's tournament, um, on our official kind of YouTube channels and our audio, uh, platforms as well. If you follow our Twitter, Instagram handle, you know, we've already been posting about working with uh cool and smooth this year look out for i'm sure everyone who listens to this already follows nikhil utam chandani but if you don't go ahead to nikhil's pages because he's doing a lot with cool and smooth this year as well um there's some more news coming which i can't say but, but look, look out look out for that news coming um as well with regards to cool and smooth and then in terms of cool and smooth channels Facebook, the YouTube page, Instagram, CS20 um, is the, correct me if I'm wrong, Dario. CS2020, yeah. Yes, CS2020. Go to those handles in order to find um, Cool and Smooth. There'll be four match reports coming out uh, this year as well on a match by match basis. Big up Isaac uh, Lockett for that. I'm sure he'll love that I gave him a shout out <laughs> as well. So there's lots, people. At the point I'm getting at, there's lots coming this year with regards to cool and smooth. And, and I guess and the content, of... Marshall, the content. We can't oh, tell them. Yeah, we can't yeah, tell yeah. them as yet. But the content is going to be a different. Yeah, level. the content. The, although I can't give anything away, the content. All I can say, people, is the content this year is going to be crazy. So just keep a lookout for all the news coming out. The fixture list at the time of recording, I'll drop this later, the fixture list will be out. That We'll be putting that up on our channels um, and so on and so forth. So keep locked in, people, because, listen, you lo some of you might be watching IPL this year. Me? Cool and smooth. That's what I'm watching. <laughs> That's what I'm watching this year, April 13th to April 29th. Dario, I'll give you the final words. Uh, I just want to say thanks for having me. Um, thanks for facilitating the tournament. The CCP partnership in particular is something that's very important to us. Um, we think that we have something that's worth the coverage. And um, obviously the coverage doesn't get better than this, plus some of the other things that we're yet to announce. Um, so I just want to encourage all of the listeners, all of the viewers to support the Cool and Smooth T20. Give it a try. Um, give it a try. Check it out. I think that the cricket will be of high quality. The coverage will be of high quality and you won't be disappointed um, in any in any way. Um, obviously, we do have we, we a lot of we expect a lot of people in the subcontinent to be viewing it as well. So regardless of what Marshall says, you can watch IPL and still watch <laughs> the cool and smooth T20 um, because they'll be played at, um, at different times on most days. Um, so we, we're just looking forward to, to seeing what this tournament brings. We're going hard for the, the 10th anniversary per se and, um, and see, see where it can go from here. Most definitely. People, um, look in the descriptions below. I'll put all the links to all the different handles of where you can find out more information um, and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, any questions you've got, get at me in the comments below. If I can't answer them, I'll, I'll send them to Dario and get answers back to you with regards to the tournament. But stay locked in, like I say, to all the different channels. Cool and Smooth T20 2023 people. Stay locked in for all of the coverage. Thank you and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket. By the fans, for the fans. 